Okay, so this question, question 51, is telling us that there's parking lot charges a dollar. In addition to that, 25 cents for every hour or part thereof in which a vehicle is parked. So the function C of H that represents the parking cost is what? Notice that the dollar here is a fixed charge. So you're going to get charged that dollar no matter what. So we're going to look at the options that represent that. Obviously, this one doesn't have a dollar separated from the 25 cents for every hour. All right. And the only answer there that makes sense is option C. So, for example, if you if you stay two, two hours, then it's 25 cents per hour. For two hours, it'd be 50 cents. So it'd be 2.5 times two to two hours. And that's going to be 50 cents, as mentioned, plus the dollar. So you pay dollar fifty, for instance. Hope, hopefully that is helpful. Okay, so now we're looking at a function maps x onto x cube, and we have the domain members negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and so forth. But notice that we have x cube, right? So it's going to be negative two. Let's input the first domain value and cube it. All right. As long as we have a negative number being, and we have the, and the power is. It's an odd number, you're going to have a negative. All right, and two cube means two times two times two, two times two times two, which is eight. Negative eight, okay? You can do that somewhere, negative two times negative two times negative two. All right, you're going to get to your negative eight. Um, is that correct? The range of blah, 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 for the domain, negative two, we get negative eight. One might not see negative eight here. Oh, it's right here. D. <laughs> all right. So therefore, these all of these will be out because they don't have negative eight, and the negative of the cube of negative two must be negative eight. So we don't need to look any further, do we? Of course, positive two cube will going to give us a positive eight. So we know these two are correct so far. One cube is going to be one. Zero cube is going to be zero. Negative one cube going to be negative one because the cube indicates. Um, that the power is going to be negative because it's an odd number and since it's a negative number here it's, we keep, retain it and one times one times one is still one so yeah that's the correct option um, this one is saying the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is four right angles then the polygon is what no right angle mean we're talking about 90 degree angles right and since we have four of them then four nines is 36 that's three 36 they about the zero that the four right angles are up to 360 degrees. Now, which polygon has its sum of internal angles being 360? A triangle is 180. So once you have three-sided shape, it's 180 degrees. Every other side, after that, you're going to add 180 degrees. So if I add a fourth side, a four, if I add a fourth side, then I'm, then I'm, I'm going to add 180 degrees to the previous, which is 180, which is going to be 360. And of course, this is basically a four-sided shape called a quadrilateral. Here we have a right angle triangle. And it says, in the right angle triangle above, which, triang which trigonometric ratio is equal to 4 eighths? OK, so we realize cosine is not involved, right? So we know the ratios already. Um, sine of the acute angle, let's say theta, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now this is actually on the formula sheet. But let's remember so ka toa. So ka toa. All right, so let's go up to the diagram itself. Now, we said 4 over 8, right? Which trigonometric ratio will give you 4 over 8? Now, the 8 here, let's look at it in the diagram. It's, the 8 is opposite. The 8 um, centimeters, which is the length of AC, is opposite the right angle. So this is basically the hypotenuse. So we know we have to be talking about um something over the hypotenuse right 
So clearly that cannot be tangent because tangent deals with only the opposite and the adjacent side. So either sine x or sine y. Let's see which one of them it is. So opposite x is what we call opposite. What's opposite in relation to x? Okay. And um, there's no opposite y because we have no measurement for this side here, which, we, which would be opposite y. All right, so um, therefore it cannot be y. It cannot be sine y. Because sine y would have been opposite over um, hypotenuse. And we're not given any measurement for the opposite there unless we go and calculate that. But they said four, so they must be talking about this measurement here. All right, so that measurement will be um, opposite over hypotenuse, which would be four over eight. So um, that's actually dealing with x. So that's sine x, which is equal to four over eight. The opposite being opposite of x and the hypotenuse being eight. So our answer is A. For question 55, we have three angles in a triangle. We're told it's an isosceles triangle. Of course, meaning these two sides are the same, so the base angles are the same. They want to find a value of x. Well, we're going to add those two base angles, get 60, and subtract it from the sum of all three angles. And we're going to end up with 120 degrees. 0 from 0 is 0. 2, 6 from 8 is 2. Put back the 1, 120. So x is really 120. This was a giveaway question. All right, so item 56 now. Let's look at it. Um, we have similar two similar triangles. We can clearly see that. All right, and we're told that actually. Um, the length of MO. So if we look at this, they want to find this length of this side here. Well, because of similar triangles, that means the sides that are um, similar are in proportion to each other. So 6, this side AB um, is similar to side um, MN, or in proportion to side MN, which is a better expression to use. Um, side AC would be in proportion to side MO. So how do we get from 6 to 3? We can do this in several ways. We can say 6 over 3, right, is equal to, since so it started with AB, the bigger one, so it's 6 over 3 is equal to 7 over X. Then we can cross multiply by saying 6 times X is 6X, and 3 times 7 is 21. And then to find X, we divide by 6, which is going to give us what? 6 into, th into 27 goes four times since six fours is 24 and then we're going to need three more to get 27 and that's going to be four no three into three goes once and three into six goes twice so x is four and a half so that's one way of dealing with it right or we can say um six divided by two six divided by two give us three seven divided by two that's three and a half. So where did I go wrong here? Six divided by three over seven over x. Six times x is six x, three seven is 21. I made a mistake here. This is be 21. So let's go over this one again. All right, so for this item, question 56, we have a pair of similar triangles. And similar means the sides, you have sides that are in proportion to each other, right? Once you can find a, um, well, you should have, they should have the same, similar shapes or similar triangles, for instance, would mean that they have the same shape, um, but different size. And the sides, match the sides um, are in proportion to each other. So for instance, and the angles are also in proportion. Well, the angles are going to be equal 
because the angles are what generate or give it give the the shape its shape really so if you notice that we have 31 degrees here we have 31 we have 59 here we have 59 here what make them what make what makes them different is the length of the sides so the sides are in proportion now so six is related to the three here so it's almost like they scale it down by dividing six by two to get three now they want to find the length of mo basically that's what they want to find the length of mo so what we're really doing here is looking at the two sides that are in proportion to each other which is ac and mo and just as we went from six to three by dividing by two we're going to go from seven and divide by two to get the length for mo as well so seven divided by two is what 27 goes three times remainder one over two which is equal to 3.5 because a half is 0.5 right or 0.5 the answer is c let's go over to 27 now so here we have this um transformation taking place is a translation going from a b to a prime b prime let's get from a to, to a to a prime let's see what was done um, what translation was used so we have two five for instance that's a and then it's the translation what it was that produced or what it is that produced um, the image a prime the image is four six so what do we add basically this is basically like how we deal with matrices right at corresponding entries two plus what give us four well two from four is two five from six is one so two plus two is four five plus one is six so the translation is two one and we can recognize it when we look at this right if we add two we're going to get seven and if we add one to the y's we get um eight eight one plus seven give us eight so two one is the correct solution for 57.